It's been a year since my Watch Some Old Anime and it's February again, so... Since last year, me and my friends have introduced a tradition of dedicating all of February to watching some old shows together. And in the spirit of this tradition, here's Watch Some Old Anime Part 2, the movie edition. Last time we talked about why you should watch some old anime, but honestly, you know by now, and here's the rapid fire version again to refresh. First, trace the influences of your favorite creators. Second, learn the origins of tropes, ideas, and themes within anime. And three, it's just that fucking good, because they don't make him like they used to. A couple of rules for the movie edition. First of all, only standard on films that you can watch as they are without having to jump into a bigger franchise. Second, no Ghibli movies because you should watch them all anyways, and our podcast on it. And third, only pre-Evangelion. And fourth, uh, movie lengths, OVAs and specials are fine, because the cinematic release is not my main concern here. I call this the Angel's Egg rule. Alright, ready? Here we go. First off, Venus Senki, aka Venus Wars, directed, written and created and designed by Yoshikazu Yasuhiko. Probably most well known for his role as a character designer for the Gundam franchise. And in this film, his designs really shine. Additionally, we have Joe Hisaishi, also known as the fucking Ghibli composer, here composing an excellent OST for a sci-fi adventure. Let's not mince words here. You aren't watching this for the plot at all. You're watching this for the absolute audiovisual perfection. This film has Sakuga to an insane extent. Mechanical action sequences that'll bust your balls, experimental techniques of combining live action and animation, incredible character designs that move perfectly in front of wonderfully crafted backgrounds that convey wonderfully the messy underground life in the Venus colonies as well as the desolate desert outside of those areas. The plot itself is sort of messy and nothing too remarkable, but it's good enough to not distract from the visual pleasure at play here. But instead of waffling on about the frankly irrelevant plot, look at this cool as fuck battle of a tank versus an excavator. Alright, are you convinced? Then go watch it. It's fucking hype. If you liked it, I also recommend checking out Crusher Joe, similar level to Sakuga, but this time we're following a small crew of space badasses as they do missions for hire. It is made by basically the same people, so have some fun with it too. The next film I got on my list for you is Rojin Z, written and with mechanical designs by Katsuhiro Otomo, also known for Akira, and with layout and key animation by none other than Satoshi Kon of Perfect Blue and Paprika fame. Rojin Z is a hilarious sci-fi comedy about a new machine supposed to take care of the elderly folk. This over-designed machine takes care of all the needs, automating every process of taking care of your grandma to the point that you don't need to spend a single minute with him anymore. Wow! But in the process, it is programmed with an AI that has a will of its own and in a hilariously escalating chase through the city, the machine katamaris itself into a gigantic garbage heap of mechanical parts and trash. The movie has absurd humor, some biting social comedy about the medical industry and a heartwarming and surprising finale. I promise you some good kafka cinema that is very reminiscent of other works by Otomo. And for those who aren't familiar, Akira is actually quite untypically serious for Otomo. Other works of his, like for example the short film Construction Cancellation Order from the Neo Tokyo Science Fiction Film Anthology, which I also highly recommend, are far more like Rojin Z, containing both the absurd comedy and an element of surreal Kafkaesque social commentary. In this short, a construction official comes to a construction site to make them stop, only to realize that the machines have taken over and are caught in a maniacal construction process that cannot be halted, where they will never make any progress but also will never stop. This is mirroring the absurdity and complexity of the bureaucratic apparatus and of meaningless labor of machines as a metaphor for those people stuck in the absurd workings of this apparatus. And finally, my third recommendation is Angel's Egg. Before I gave you a fantastic action film and a goofy social commentary. Now, how about an artsy, super symbolic mood piece with a disturbing, introspective quality? I'd be lying if I told you that I get what's going on in Mamoru Oshii's Angel's Egg. The director of Urusei Yatsura, who would later go on to direct the Pet Labor movies in Ghost in the Shell, here goes through a proper crisis of faith. 
while being himself very wake on what the film means, sometimes insisting on the fact that he doesn't even know himself what it means, we can wager a guess and link it to his own disillusionment with Christianity, because the film makes heavy use of symbolism related to the Bible and stuff. And if you consider this idea, interpreting the movie makes a lot more sense. But let me not take this away from you here, I think the confusion and the interpreting of the symbols is a big part of the experience of the movie. No matter how confusing it is also, I argue that it works in its favor. The surreal and desolate landscapes are mainly quiet characters are moving through, repeating ritualistic actions we can start to understand are very effective at getting us deeply into the mood. The film is dripping with atmosphere and it's hard to not get drawn deeply into its nihilistic visions and its cosmic horror-like qualities that loom over the entire film. Just look at this scene that introduces us very early on to the movie. This is the kind of cosmic entity that is watching over the film as we follow on this quest for meaning. This is really an anime film that wouldn't be out of place at an avant-garde film festival, but that is also accessible to just about anyone who likes dark, introspective and moody art. Also, it apparently influenced Dark Souls 3, go figure. Always referencing the good shit. Well, without further ado, there you go, three old movies you should watch, have some fun, watch some old anime, and see you next time.